Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Welcome to another segment of All Politics is Local with your host, R. Joe Winch. And I have none other than my sidekick with me this evening, Councilwoman Cynthia Jennings. And there's many, many things going on. I don't need to tell you all about what's going on in the political arena. Hopefully that everybody is paying attention. And the only thing that I want to ask you to consider is that if you worked for an organization for over 40 years of your life, you helped individuals in that organization to be promoted. You helped them to advance over yourself. You helped them to do everything that they need to do to make sure that America is safe. And you have held many, many positions that even current presidents have not held. Do you think that you should have an opportunity to hold the highest office? So if you have not figured out who I'm talking about, you ought to know is no, uh, none other than Hillary Clinton. There's no other person, even the president himself, broke down and said it last week. He said, I'm sorry, Bill, talking to Bill Clinton, that nobody, not even himself nor him, has been more qualified to serve this country as a president than Hillary Clinton right now. And as women, we know that if we're going to get a job, that a man gets, unfortunately, that we're going to have to be better, that we're going to have to be stronger, that we're going to have to do more in order to get there. It's just the way of life right now. It's just the way things are. So what I'm asking everybody to do, I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Republican, a Republican, a independent, a working family, whatever green party, whatever you are, you consider and you weigh the odds and you look at what the Republicans are offering and you consider what the Democrats are offering. And I guarantee you, you going to come out on the democratic side because that's exactly where we need to be right now. America is not a place where individuals need to be on the job training as the highest office of the land. That's not a place where you learn, you know, the job. You're already going to be learning because some things you just don't know until you actually get there. You know, and I, I'm sure that Councilwoman um, Jennings and I can both speak to that as being members of the city council. You think you know what the government is until you become the government. And then you find out exactly what the government is and how the government operates. And I just want to psych, um, kick just go to the side for a little bit to talk a little bit about, you know, an organization or organizations in the city of Hartford who do the response and crisis intervention um, for our city that have been doing it, you know, since 2005. And one of those organizations is Hartford Communities That Care. And I know lately we've not heard a lot about what Hartford Community That Care um, has been doing. We've been hearing a lot about other organizations who do, you know, crime intervention, go out, talk to families. When we have a lot of gun violence that's going on, unfortunately, you know, in the city of Hartford, it's these organizations that get calls from the hospital and they drop what they're doing and go straight to the hospital. And I'm not telling you what I think, I'm telling you what I know. Because Councilwoman Jennings and I were scheduled to have a meeting tonight with such an organization, um, Hartford Communities That Care. When that call came in, we immediately stopped the meeting, went straight to the hospital to deal with what was going on um, with the family. Unfortunately, a young man had got shot, but thank God, the fortunate part that he will survive. So as these things are happening, you know, I don't want anybody to get the idea that it's one organization in the city of Hartford that is going out doing all this work. There are many um, organizations that are going out and, and doing this crisis intervention work and making sure that the families are okay. Because whenever there is an incident, it don't only hurt the family of the victim, it hurts both sides of the family. So you got to sometimes get in there and make sure that there's no retaliation. Sometimes you got to be the mediator. Sometimes you got to be the counselor. You know, it's a lot of things that goes on with that, but you also got to have that dedication, you know, to do it. And it's unfortunate you know, in our city that one individual gets X amount of dollars, you know, to do same thing that another organization gets maybe like 30 percent 
of what that individual gets. So we're going to try to work on, you know, in the future, see how we leverage to make sure that, you know, organizations get equal funding for equal services that they provide. But right now, we just want to make sure that everybody stays safe. Young people continue to talk about problems and learn how to do conflict resolution where both parties can just say, you know what, we're going to just agree to disagree and we're going to walk away and everybody going to be breathing in the morning. Because that's what's really important to me. And that's what's more important to Hartford Communities That Care, you know, and to, um, even to the peace builders, you know, their organization, you know, who goes out and do this work too. And you all hear, you know, about what they're doing, but you're not getting a lot of information, you know, about the other side, the Hartford Communities That Care Peace, who also does a great work and a lot of work. Um, their first responders, when the St. Francis called, any of the hospitals called, the police department calls upon them, churches call upon them, schools call upon them, and they drop what they're doing. I don't care what it is, and they go to the service of making sure that they can resolve those conflicts and also make sure that the crisis intervention between those young people. So I want to go ahead and introduce my guests because you all know when it comes to the community and talking about our young people and the workforce and things that we need for our young people, <coughs> I could go on forever. But you all don't want to hear from me forever. So this is her first time visiting us on All Politics. Look, well, no, because you did a segment or two at the... At City Hall. That's right. That's so, sure you know, did. you visited us at City Hall, but it's the first time that we've had her mm -hmm. in the studio. Mm -hmm. So we want to say welcome to our Councilwoman Jennings. Thank you. Thank you, R. Joe. And it is a pleasure serving with R. Joe on the council because one of the things that's important that we recognize is that it is critical that we who are elected to serve in the city of Hartford represent the residents and the families that we are elected to serve. We cannot play politics with... Um, Whoever, whoever else is in power. There's something called a balance of power. The mayor has his office, the treasurer has his office, and the council has our office. Our responsibilities are writing laws that support the, what the people in this city desire and making sure that we investigate the other um, areas of government in the event that there's something that needs to be looked into or some impropriety or as we perceive it to be. So it's a pleasure serving on council with you, R. Joe, and with the other council members. It's a real experience um, knowing how the gravity of the situation that we're faced with now mm -hmm. and how important it is that our people are not disregarded and left out to just flounder without leadership in City Hall. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we try to do here that we try to make sure that we keep people abreast you know, of things that are going on. And we know that we're talking about the ballpark every single week. Well, it's still not <laughs> open. And we still got that big $2.5 million bill to pay when February comes. So if the ballpark isn't making any money, well, we got to figure out where's that $2.5 million going to come from. And we're trying not to let it come from your pocket. So you keep your eyes and your ears open on that. When we get to a place where we can have you know, the ballpark people come in and have conversation with you. We'll do it. We're not there yet. So when we get there, we'll, you know, because I like to hear from the horse's mouth. I don't want to be telling you what I don't know. So when I have information, I'll be 100% happy to share um, that information with you. But what I do have information about is Sheffa Grace is going to be offering a women's conference. Um, I got to look at it to so make sure I get it right. It's Vessels of Transformation by Sheffa Grace. And it's going to be at Liberty Christian Center, 23 Vine Street, here in the city of Hartford. Friday night, we'll be honoring six women, phenomenal women. We have Pastor Mashonda Jones, uh, Minister Corindus Bonner, Lady Melinda Johnson. You all know her because she's the wife of Pastor A.J. Johnson. Um, Shannon Berry, who does From the Heart Hartford, where they help treat individuals who have um, been stricken by cancer. And also Maggie, Maggie Gardner, who runs Gardner House, who is a two-time, um, faced a two-time bout with cancer herself and is still continuing to help others. So we want to celebrate them on October the 21st, um, starting at 6.30 p.m. And then on Saturday, starting at noon, we're going to start with a brunch. We have three workshops for women, so you want to make sure um, that you get in there. Um, seating is limited. We can fit only 100 women 
um, in there. Um, you can buy your tickets at Eventbrite, Vessels of Transformation. You can go to my Facebook page, R. Joe Winch, and type in uh, Vessels of Transformation and pay for your tickets that way. For those of you who want hard copy tickets, you may call me at 860-462-5063, and we will get those tickets to you. And then on Saturday night, Saturday night, October the 27th, we're going to culminate everything with a full-blown gospel concert. And our featuring artist will be Omanessa uh, Aruma. So she's from Nigeria, and um, she is going to just blow the house up. You know, with her gospel music, we have a few local artists that will also be performing. When I get that list, I'll give that to you all. So for those of you who only want to come to the gospel concert, it starts at 7 p.m. Saturday night, October the 22nd. So all are welcome. We'd like to have the workshop on Saturday um, just be women so we could talk about women's stuff and things that, you know, we need to be aware of. And the younger women learn from the more mature women. I don't want to say older women because then y'all get mad at me. So the younger ones can learn from the more mature women because we've been through some things. And so we can try to teach them and help them to not have to bump their head, you know, on the things that they're willing to listen to. So for those of you who want tickets, again, you can get them at Facebook, Vessels of Transformation. You can also contact me at 860-462-5063. All right. And we love to hear from each and every one of you. If you have comments that you want to make on the station, you can also call into the station because I understand that we're <laughs> live tonight on Facebook. So if you want to um, get in touch with um, myself or J. Sam McCauley, you can on the Facebook and stand on a post a phone number so that you all will be able to call in and ask questions. So, and I know that um, we're going to be having several things coming up in the city of Hartford. The living wage ordinance is going to be on the agenda coming up because the city has recommended that we lower um, the living wage. And I'm saying, no, we're not going to lower the living wage while we're bringing in individuals who need a GPS to find city hall and pay them six figures. And then we want to lower what we pay the residents. So we're going to be um, having a debate about that. I don't want to say we're going to have a fight about it. We're going to debate about it. And at the end, we're hoping that we'll come out victorious. And I know Councilwoman Jennings has a lot of things on her agenda, and we'll hear from those. Thank you, Arjo. Um, one of the things that I think that it's important that, that we um, talk about is the fact that this past Saturday, every Saturday from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock for eight weeks, I was providing a free train the trainer program to train our young people to become mathematicians. We had our last class this Saturday. So we have um, about 12 to 15 people that are available and willing to go out and start training our young people. They will involve themselves in an internship program that is a 24 hour or eight week internship program to work with our young people. So. All of this is free of charge. It was sponsored by um, Mosque Number 14, located at 2550 Main Street, under um, Brother um, Calvin Lovejoy, and it was a very successful program. So, how can people get in get in touch with you if they want to be a participant? Um, what they should do is call my office and tell and just leave a message with my my executive assistant Russell Hicks or my intern Rafael. Um, and the numbers are? Rafael Santiago. The number is 860-757-9573. That's 860-757-9573. Give them your name, number, and tell them you're interested in the math training program. All right. Excellent. Excellent. We have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Oh, that's fine. Listen, uh, this is uh, Mr. Jefferson calling. And uh, I'm glad I got you and Councilwoman Jennings together because I have an issue uh, that I'm extremely passionate about that I, I'm dealing with in reference to the pond of Bikini Park. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just give you first the brief gist of what started this. Uh, not too long ago on Facebook, there was a uh, topic posted saying that 
there was some pumps that were located inside the pond at Kitty Park where they had the fish stored at. Right. And some people had witnessed the pumps being taken out. Right. They, they took them out in December. The pumps were relocated to either uh, Bushnell Park or over to Elizabeth Park. Right. So they were not. I did some investigating. They come to find out that that statement wasn't true. It's not true. As a matter of fact, last Thursday on my radio show, I had uh, Senator Eric Coleman and former council uh, man Robert Painter call in and to give us some insight on exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And to my understanding, I went up to Kitty Park Pond House and spoke to uh, Mr. Clark King and mm -hmm. another individual, I believe, by the name of Mr. Hester, about the situation because the pond is in very, very dire shape. It is. Several months ago, you could go up to Keeney Park Pond, Councilman mm -hmm. Jennings, and you could see families literally fishing up at the pond because it was so beautiful and it's well stocked. Mm -hmm. Now, there's so much algae in the pond that there's absolutely nobody up there fishing. So what I found out is that it wasn't a pump. They said that there was they call it was the aerator. They were the aerator. Which sends oxygen to the plants and mm -hmm. to the fish mm -hmm. in the pond. Mm -hmm. And there were divers, I guess, from public works that were in the pond mm -hmm. a week ago. And they said that one of the aerators had been vandalized and the other one wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So they took them out. I was also told that in order to replace those two aerators that's needed in the pond, that it would cost mm -hmm. yeah. in excess of about ten thousand dollars in order to replace, which we know the city don't have the money. No, let me let me okay, that Bruce, let me let me interject here because I did um I saw the same thing and I got the same information. And I immediately called Public Works and then after I called Public Works, I called the mayor and uh, gave that question to him that I know that if we can find, you know, money to employ people, I know we can find $8,000 to fix the pond. So they had to, they took them out every year in December, I understand. And then what they did was when they took them out to service them, they discovered that they were broken. But I'm glad that the people brought attention to it because I think that, you know, had people not talked about when they went to the pond and my aide went over and took pictures. So we also had pictures to present, um, but we didn't have to present them because once I got done with the conversation, they said, OK, we found the money miraculously and um, we're fixing the pumps. So this today is the first of August. By August the 10th, um, the new air raider should be in and they're going to restock the pond and the water should be clear. So we're going to give them the, until August the 10th to see that that work is actually being completed. And if it doesn't, we will go back because um, Councilwoman Jennings is a chair um, of the parks and I sit on her committee. And so we were grateful that the community called us to let us know what was going on in the park. And we immediately got on it and that is being resolved. Councilman Jennings. No, thank you, Bruce, for calling. It absolutely has been resolved. The mayor did find the money to fix, to replace those aerators. Mm -hmm. I was there the day that the divers came. I thought there was a body in the pond. So I was stopped them and I asked them, um, why are you in the pond? And mm -hmm. they said that they were, they were in here to get the aerators. I guess they had to, I did hear them say they had to take one to Bushnell Park. Right. So those, and you know, under further investigation, it turned out that our aerators were, one of them was broken we and one service. of them was not. They have, they, they were going to service them. And um, Councilwoman Arjo was correct. We are going to have those aerators replaced. Absolutely. Well, thank you all. Thank everyone. And thank the um, the, the well, Keeney Park you Walking Group for well, also bringing that to the attention. Is there anything we can do? Because there's been some conversation, uh, Councilwoman, about a lot of, um, how should I say this very tastefully? There's a lot of individuals who don't reside in the city of Hartford who happen to be of different ethnicities coming in to Hartford now, utilizing the beautiful golf course that we have on Tower Avenue. However, individuals have been really complaining. I do a radio show at WESU Radio on Thursday nights, and people be calling in, and there's been a mass, massive amount of complaints about how the golf course 
um, is being utilized by individuals that's from the city, of, from not from the city of Hartford, from the outside, from the suburbs, and they got brand new golf carts and brand new things, and it looks beautiful up there. But the part where our citizens um, do a lot of activities has been completely closed off. You can't. Even yeah. See, so we have okay. So Bruce, there's 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 a couple things going on here. No, okay. So there's a couple of things going on here. One, we don't mind people coming into Kenny Park to play golf. I don't care if they green, blue, zebra stripe, or polka dot. They have to pay to play. So we don't mind them coming in. However, we do need to make sure that we're having a conversation with not only the residents, but also remember every park have a friends group. So some of these conversations need to be dealt with through the friends of Kenny Park to find out what they are doing to respond to some of the issues that the people are having about what is going on with the park, because that is their charge. That's what the, you know, the city charged them to do. So they should be getting these conversations and then they should come to the council and say, okay, well, these are the situations that are happening in the park. What can we do? How can you help so that we can, you know, make this better? So I would ask you to give the friends of Kenny park, um, calls, and ask them what they are doing to help, you know, curb some of the issues that people are saying are going on in Kenny Park. Well, Councilman Arjo, that's one of the things that I did the other day. I addressed that with Mr. Clark King. I said, who are the friends of Kenny Park? I'll get you the list. I'll get you the list. Right. From the scenario of everything that's been going on. Yeah, I'll get you the list. Who I'll get you the list. Okay. So that you could call them directly. You're welcome. Bring that to light because on this week's radio show, believe it or not, I'm scheduled to have Mayor Broman on. So oh, excellent, excellent, show. excellent. So if you have him on this week and it's after the pump has been fixed, then make sure you say, you know, thank his office for responding to the people's call to get that fixed. Uh, I certainly will. And thanks for calling in. All right, so if you have any questions, you know, be sure to call us. We're live and we'll be here for the next nine minutes. So whatever it is that's burning on your heart, if it's a community issue, a park issue like Mr. Jefferson called in, we'll be happy to respond um, to the best of our ability. If we don't have information for you, we will look it up. We will get it. We will find it. So I will get Mr. Jefferson the list of the individuals on Friends of Kenny Park so that he can contact them about um, his park issues. So if you have any of those things going on, you can also call uh, myself or Councilwoman Jennings by dialing 860-757-9311, and they will connect you uh, with our office. So if it's something that you don't want to talk about over the air, you can always call us and you can get us there. So while we're talking about, you know, a lot of things that are, are going on, you know, in our communities, one of the things that I think that is paramount, you know, this year, and y'all know this is all politics is local. So I want to make sure that everybody the age of 18 and over, I don't care what party you register under, get yourself registered to vote. However, when you go vote, vote for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> go ahead, Cynthia. No, I was I didn't you I you tell people not to vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't okay. even mention that man's name. Oh my right. God. He is so clueless. I mean, this is a you know, and I don't, I don't mind that the Republicans have him for a candidate because I think that you know that's wonderful for us because I think that we're gonna Democrats are gonna win by a landslide. But I was so proud, you know, of the Khan family, you know, who stood there and just you know really poured their heart out about you know after losing their son, you know, and it, it's so hard, you know, for anybody to talk about losing their their loved ones. It's just very, very it hits you deep you know, deep down in your heart, you know, just to, just to open your mouth and just say those, you know, those things that goes back to, you know, I, we lost my nephew last year and it still, you know, hurts like it was yesterday. So, you know, it, it really deep, you know, hurts you really, really hard. And so um, they were talking, he had said, you know, in his comments that, you know, Donald Trump had made negative comments about, you know, their family and, you know, people who were, um, prisoners of war and all those kind of negative things. And he said that you have lost nothing and you have sacrificed nothing. And so Donald Trump's comeback was, well, I created jobs. I, you know, got people employment opportunities, but listen, yo, that's not a sacrifice. That's an <laughs> investment or that's a community service. That's not a sacrifice. 
sacrifice is when you lose something. So okay, well he lost money. So right. maybe mm -hmm. you know. So maybe that was a sacrifice. He didn't make mm -hmm. that much money because he had to hire somebody else to do the job. But it's not the same. You know, when you sacrifice your life, a person give their life to protect others. That's the ultimate sacrifice. I mean, there's no greater sacrifice, you know, that any man could give than to lay down his life, you know, for his sister or his brother. So don't dare, you know, try to say anything. If people come to you with what they feeling about losing their loved ones, just take it, leave it silent, does not need to be responded to because that is such a really, really hurt, you know, deep down feeling that nobody can just deal with unless you've been there, you have no idea, you know, what that is like. So you just empathize with that person by just being silent is the best thing that you can do. Go ahead, Cynthia. You know, one thing I wanted to talk about was the horrific loss of life that we faced in our communities. And if we don't think it's our job to do something to stop this violence, it is. Um, one of the things that I'm, I really like about us living in a free society is we don't have to wait to get paid to run programs exactly. and do things to protect our young people. Mm -hmm. I have right now, I've been meeting with um, the Black um, Pilots Association nationally, um, representatives from that, and we want to start a program where we train our young people to get their pilot's license by the time they're 17 years old. They can actually get a license at 17 where they are free to fly all over the country mm -hmm. if they so mm -hmm. desire. All right, but we need to have flight school training. We're now starting the mathematics training where if we if we continue training trainers to train our young people in math, we can train up to 10,000 children over the next year. Mm -hmm. So it's important that no we do this. No more math failing grades. That's no right. No one else should math. fail math. You cannot be a pilot. You cannot be a doctor. You cannot be you a nurse. Math. You cannot go to college. Yeah, you, you need, need to math. have math and and we can train our young people in math. Mm -hmm. So that's what we, that's 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 my personal issue to train the young people. And I also talked to a pilot who said he's you know that he is a a skilled flight instructor. He can train our young people in all of the aspects. We can train them in the math. He can train them in the aspects of flight management and in the um with the um the, the 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 training that they need on the ground before they even get into the air and he can sign off on their flight hours. Wow. We've met with three flight schools already. We have a program that we are going to get funded in order to put the children in the promise zone to work. Those are six figure jobs where they can they can be trained and ready to go in less than a year. So we need them to put their hours in. We need to have um, parents recognize that there are things that their children can do that will allow them to move into aviation, including if they don't want to fly aircraft um, um, repair, aircraft I was engine say, repair. You need, you need mechanics too. That's right. You know, we so have they can do there's aircraft a, repair. There's a federal shortage of airline pilots. They are now keeping airline pilots onto their 65 as long as there's wow. one in the cockpit that is not 65 years old. So we have so we to, need we young have to people. train we need young a workforce. People. And we have plenty of young people in the promise zone, which is zip code 06120 and 06112. We have plenty of children that want to be pilots. I met with students at um, Simpson Waverly. I met with students all over the city, but particularly in the promise zone. And every one of them, male and female, are interested in becoming pilots. I took a couple of young people over to the airport so that they could see and meet with the pilots and see the planes take off and look at the um, the school where the um, the engines are being repaired. So it's up to us. It's eleven thousand dollars a year mm. to train a child to be in to to be to fly. And but that's the, all the, the way but there's no cost school. to the parents, right? It's, it's, right. It's no cost to the parents, right? So and in me, y'all know, I'm not concerned about what zip code you live in. If you live in the 06 one anywhere in the city of Hartford, blue, green, popa, zebra stripe people. Mm -hmm. I don't care. You know, everybody, you know, if this is something new that sparks your interest, you know, give us a call at 860-757-9311. Because one thing I know that Councilman Woman Jennings cannot do is ask the people to come in if there's nobody to train. So mm -hmm. if young people are interested and getting a pilot license if you're interested in aircraft mechanics, any of those things, make sure that you give us a call because she is definitely passionate about it. And this is just something different, you know, outside of the realm of just the everyday, 
ordinary other jobs that you can see. If you get a license to fly, I mean, it's endless possibilities of where you can go or even to do aircraft mechanics, endless possibilities of where you can go. So you got to just broaden your horizons. And so not everything is right within your reach that you can see. You got to start thinking outside of that box. And I was so wonderfully, you know, here, um, Hillary Clinton, because I know I love Hillary Clinton. And she said, you know, when there's no ceiling, the sky is the limit. So that means you can go any number of places. So I just want to thank you all for tuning in tonight to All Politics is Local with your host, Arjo Wint. And then we're going to sign off with Councilwoman Jennings, have the last word, and make sure that you come right back here and join us again next week where we'll share to you what we know about all politics is local. And I thank you so much, our Joe, for, for doing this program. Thanks Stan McCauley for, um, and Naisha McCauley for actually owning the station and making sure that things are still in line and continuing to go move forward. It's important that we take care of our children, that we run programs that we can run. If you are good at running something that a child can benefit from, do it. You don't need to ask permission. You don't need to be funded. We, Before we leave here, we need to do something to build our community. And we thank the parents for hanging in there and understand that if you call 860-757-9572, as well as Arjo's number, you can sign up and let us know that you're interested so that we can get back in touch with you when we have our program ready.